Hey guys, today's video is about the 4Movie Theatre, absolutely amazing laser projector, and I'm going to be showing it to you on a VividStorm 120 inch ALR screen. Let's check it out. So you've probably seen that I have a large 75 inch TV on the wall in this room and I'm going to need somewhere to throw the laser projector image and that's where this comes into place. This is a VividStorm 120 inch ALR projector screen. This one's special because it retracts into its casing, means it's a small form factor until you want to use the screen and then it's going to rise out automatically. Right, let's get out of the box and have a look at this. So now that we've got somewhere to throw the image, let's get it out of the box. So you've joined me on the floor here with my 4Movie Theatre laser projector. Exciting times. I'm on the floor because that is actually where my laser projector is going to be living because it needs to project from below the large screen that I have. First of all, I want to show you this marvellous device, starting with the front where you can see the entire front is a speaker grill and you can see that the sound is by Bowers and Wilkins, which is obviously a very well-respected sound company. It also has two speakers on either side. On the top here, we have a power button, and then we have two infrared sensors, and they are meant to detect movement in front of the projector, and they'll turn off the lasers to protect your eyes if it detects any movement. And then you have the actual projection lens in here. Right, let's have a look at the back. And on the back here, we have three HDMI ports. HDMI 3 is eARC compatible. We have two USB ports, a 3.5 millimeter analog audio output, a Spdiff Toslink optical digital output, and a LAN socket for ethernet. AC input socket is a standard cloverleaf. So now that I've shown you it, I'm now gonna start connecting it up. So I'm gonna connect it to the power, I'm gonna connect it to my cinema amplifier here, and I'm gonna connect it to my Xbox One X over here as well. Let's get to it. So what I want is for this 4Movie Theatre projector to be able to control my amplifier. If I turn the volume up and down on the projector, I want that to turn the volume up and down on my amp. We're going to do this through a technology called Arc, and that is available through the HDMI 3, which is where I'm going to plug this in here. Now, HDMI 3 is actually eARC, and that means it supports technologies like Dolby Atmos, so that's really, really good. So I'm going to plug the Xbox into HDMI 2, just here. Now you might be wondering why I didn't choose HDMI 1 for the Xbox One X, and that is because there is a compatibility issue between the Xbox One X and the HDMI 1 port on this unit. If you use HDMI 1, you're not gonna get Dolby Vision, you're not gonna get 4K, it just doesn't work for some reason. So if you use HDMI 2, it's absolutely perfect. And HDMI 1 works absolutely fine for absolutely everything else. It's just the Xbox One X, there's just some compatibility issue with it. But uh, as, as I say, Xbox One X works absolutely fine in HDMI 2, and I'm gonna show you that in a sec. Right, let's get it switched on and aligned with the screen. And we can see that the screen isn't quite aligned where it is at the moment. So first thing I'm gonna do is just move the projector around a little bit trying to get it where I need it to be. And then I'm gonna start the keystone correction. Now, as you can see, it has eight point keystone correction, which is awesome. It also has some fine tuning that we can do after we've done the main keystone correction. So I'm just gonna see if I can fill this screen with no overlap and then go from there. You can see that some of the image is actually projecting onto my ceiling there so the keystone correction is going to just remove that and keep the image just on this screen and that's what I'm uh, doing here. So to my eye that's now correct the full screen is now lit up with the projector there is no overspill going around the projector screen so that should be fine. Now aside from keystone correction 
The next big setup thing is of course focusing and this projector does have a bit of a quirk when it comes to focusing, which I'll show you now. So this is the focus screen and this gives us the ability to control the focus automatically using the remote control because the setting is going to depend on how far the projector is from this screen that you are projecting onto. Now the quirk of this projector is that it doesn't matter how long you try to focus it, it will never really focus properly on the top side until the projector has been on for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And uh, that is evident if you have a look at the screen now. I don't know if you can see, whereas the bottom of this projector is absolutely pinpoint sharp, the top of the projector is slightly, slightly out of focus. It's slightly blurry and that's quite annoying. Now, when I first got the projector, I was very, very upset and I was thinking, what have I done spending all this money on this projector? But the fact is after about 20 minutes to half an hour, it does actually correct itself. And when you're watching films or TV programs, you just can't see it anyway. So it's so what you're seeing here is the dashboard of the projector. It's the home page, what you see when you first turn it on. And it's Android TV. Now, Android TV is particularly good because it's Android. And that means you get the Google Play Store. And the Google Play Store allows you to install as many apps as you want to your heart's content. Now, everything I've tested works fine with the exception of Netflix. We try to open Netflix. It simply says that this version of Netflix app is not compatible with your device. It does actually come up with another error message sometimes, but the fact is it's not working, which is unfortunate. Now this doesn't really bother me because I've got Netflix that runs on my Xbox One X and that is full 4K with Dolby Vision and everything. And I'll show you that later. But I will say that this is an Android device, just like the Android head units that I review on my channel, you can sideload apps onto it. And I've sideloaded the same version of Netflix that I install on the Android head units. But the problem with sideloading apps on Android TV is that it doesn't allow you to actually put them on the dashboard here. So the only way that you can get to them is by going to the settings up in the corner here, uh, going to apps and then going to see all apps. And then if we scroll all the way, there we go. So we've got Netflix here. So if I open this one, you will find that it works. Now the limitation of this Netflix is that it doesn't play in 4K, doesn't have Dolby Vision. It's an older version of Netflix which doesn't have all of that good stuff. So you're not going to get the best out of the projector. But if you must have Netflix installed on Android TV on the actual projector itself, then go for it. Now some of you might be thinking, well that's rubbish. Like well, I've spent all this money on a projector, three and a half thousand dollars, three thousand pounds on a projector and Netflix doesn't even work. Well, that's not strictly true. And if you think about it, if you're gonna spend this amount of money, it's because you want something that's best in class. You're buying it because of the picture quality, which is absolutely spectacular. When we talk about audio, for example, you're not just gonna settle for the Bowers and Wilkins speaker on the front of this, even though it is great, but this is a cinema screen. So you're gonna want tower speakers or satellite speakers around your room to get the 5.1, 7.1 Dolby Atmos. And the, the point of all of this is that one of the add-ons that you would probably buy with one of these is a media player. And that is what my Xbox One X does. You can install whatever apps you want on the Xbox and they appear in absolute pristine 4K clarity on the screen with Dolby Vision as well, which is absolutely epic. You don't need an Xbox. You can do it with a PlayStation, you can do it with a Nvidia Shield, you can do it with any number of media boxes that you might have. But the fact is, it's an additional accessory that you probably already have to get the most out of the screen. Right, I wanna show you something pretty. So I'm gonna turn my Xbox on. So you can see it says Xbox up here, that's because it's detecting it on HDMI and you can see it's DTS audio and 2160p UHD 4K video, awesome. When I open Netflix, you will see it says Dolby Vision here and here, okay? And that is because this is true Dolby Vision 4K that we're seeing here. The only laser projector in existence which actually has that option. Right, let's find something with David Attenborough which is nice and high definition and colorful. Now, you might see some flickering because it's dark in this room and the refresh rate of the camera is not going to match the refresh rate that I'm projecting onto this screen. So whatever flickering that you're seeing is actually not here. It's not visible to me whilst I'm actually watching it. Now it's hard for me to express to you over this video 
just how sharp and beautiful this image is. It is quite simply stunning. You're talking about a massive 120 inch screen or you can have a 100 inch screen or 150, however big you wanna have it. And it's true 4K Dolby Vision, really, really bright. And as you can see in this room, it's not dark. I mean, I don't have all the lights off and you can still see it perfectly fine. That's how bright this thing is. That's what the 2400 ANSI Lumens does. Gives you this kind of TV quality on this scale. And it's just so beautifully sharp. The last projector that I had was a BenQ W1080ST. It was a short throw projector that I had on the ceiling aimed at the wall, 150 inches. It was 1080p. Doesn't even come close to the quality of this. I know what you're saying, what about games? Okay, well, let's have a look. One of the things I love about the Xbox One X is that I don't have to wait any time at all. I've just had the Xbox switched off and I'm right in the middle of my game. And uh, this is gaming on a 120 inch screen, okay? It is just absolutely glorious. There is nothing like this whatsoever. Now, one of the things that you worry about with projectors or any screen for that matter is the response time. So let's have a look. Let's see how long it takes for the projector to react when I push a button. So push a button. So you can see there is a slight delay there. If you're doing competitive first person shooting or something like that, yeah, may maybe it will affect you, but you know, if you're just like me and you like uh, just playing a game every now and again, it's absolutely fine. I mean, I mean, just look at it. <laughs> like, oh, um, yeah, it's just truly amazing. Oh dear, there's a tank coming. And then finally, you have the settings. Now, picture is important because it allows you to actually change the intricate nature of the image on the projector screen. So you have the... The first thing up here just tells you whether or not something is Dolby Vision and you're going to notice the Dolby Vision logo come up when I turn the Xbox on and, and play something from Netflix, which I'll show you later. But the brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, gamma, color temperature here. You find some more advanced video options here. And then you've got a color tuner. Again, hue, saturation, brightness, offset, gain. And then it even comes with an 11 point white balance correction. So loads of options to get the image exactly as you want it. Now, sound by Bowers and Wilkins is much more than just controlling the speakers on this unit, is all the audio functionality of this projector. So if we go in here, um, you get some options. So first thing is it says speakers on. They're not actually on because as soon as you have an external device providing sound, it switches off all the Bowers and Wilkins stuff. So the speakers aren't actually on at the moment. If you find that you have a delay between the image and the audio, you can actually set that delay here because it's really, really annoying when you see someone speaking that audio doesn't quite match up. Well, you can correct that from uh, this point here. Then we come to EARC. Now we talked about CEC earlier, which is control of devices from the actual projector's remote control using HDMI. EARC is the sound. So it's gonna provide complete multi-channel digital sound from the projector to the receiver using just that one cable. And then there's various other options here as well for you to play with. And finally, remotes and accessories allows you to pair Bluetooth devices to this projector. So you could technically pair some Bluetooth headphones to it if you don't want to wake up everyone else in the house when you're watching your movies. And the remote control itself is Bluetooth. And I want to talk about experience for just a second. I, I don't want to watch movies, I want to experience them. I want to be sucked into the story. I want to see it how the production team intended. And that is what you get with something like this four movie theater. It gives you an absolute pristine quality, huge display. And once you've paired it with a decent sound system, you are in true cinema heaven. Now, obviously the brand four movie theater sounds a bit suspect, but I can assure you it is absolutely spectacular. You can spend more money and you can get a Sony or an LG or some other ultra short throw projector. But the fact is you can spend that additional money and get the brand, but it is not going to beat what you can get for this. And don't take my word for it. There are plenty of other reviews of this projector which show just how amazing it is. Now the best offers at the moment 
are available directly from Four Movie themselves. I'll leave a link in the video description. And because we're around Black Friday at the moment, there will be vouchers that you can get, which will give you four or five hundred dollars off if you subscribe to their newsletter. So I'll leave a link in the video description. You can go and have a look at that. Now, if there's anything that I've missed or anything that you'd like me to try with this projector, please just ask in the comments section and I will do my best to facilitate that for you as soon as possible.